Hey everybody, here's a short demonstration on slinkies and waves. What I'm going to do here is first set up a standing wave on this slinky using a low frequency. When we use a low frequency, we get a long wave. You can see on this that there are nodes and antinodes. The nodes are areas of destructive interference. That's what you would see in the middle where there seems to be little movement of the slinky and the antinodes are the areas of maximum constructive interference where the slinky seems to be more uh, away from the equilibrium point. Here I increased the frequency and therefore shortened the wavelength. And you can again see the nodes and antinodes. Here's another set of nodes and antinodes. In slow motion, areas of destructive and constructive interference. You'll notice that the wave pulse, as it reaches the table leg at the end of the slinky, bounces back upside down. Gives me the higher frequency, and of course, with the higher frequency, that is my hand moving back and forth more and more quickly, we get a shorter and shorter wavelength because the the speed of the wave remains constant because the properties of the slinky are not being changed and it's the properties of the medium that determine the speed of the wave. So shortening the wavelength is done by increasing the frequency. Now here's a, a demo of a pulse reflecting off the end of the uh, slinky. Because it's a rigid end at the other, uh, at the end, it reflects back upside down. And here I'm generating a compression wave in the slinky. A little bit hard to see, but you can see the compression wave move down the slinky and then bounce back. This is how sound waves work. They compress air molecules in front, and that compression wave travels through the medium, in this case the slinky, or in the case of air, through the air molecules. 